Hi, hi, so we're now looking at experimental design questions. Um, this is from the 2012 paper question four. OK, so context. This is still the same whether it's an experimental design question or whether it's a data handling question. The first thing you have to do is figure out what information you actually have. So you've got a diagram showing apparatus used in investigation of aerobic respiration. You should recognise that apparatus because it's the same stuff you had at NAP5. OK, the tap was kept open to the air for 15 minutes and to start the experiment, tap was closed and the reading on the scale recorded every two minutes for 10 minutes. The reading on the scale was again recorded and the results are shown in the table. You're told the temperature it was kept at as well. OK, so here's your data. Data is not complex at all. We have our zero time running up to 10 um, and then we've got our reading on the scale in centimetres cubed. OK, so a fairly straightforward table. OK, state why the apparatus was left for 15 minutes with the tap open before readings were taken. OK, so here is our setup and here's our tap at the top. So basically it's to allow this, I would say, to become acclimatised. Being very careful, there's a t and it's a, an unacceptable answer on the MART scheme, do not use the word adapt. It is not adapting to it, it's not changing to, to suit it. What it is doing is acclimatising. So just be careful of the terms. Um, it is to allow this whole system to settle, basically. Um, but I would say mainly, I would say the snail. A suitable control. OK, so a control is something which will allow you to compare your data to a set of data which allows you to know what is happening without the factor that, you're, that you've got. Um, in your experiment. So the factor in your experiment was aerobic respiration in snails. So what you really have to do is remove the snail. Uh, I don't mean kill the snail, but something where you have uh, no snail, or better still, something with the same volume of the snail, but that you know does not do aerobic respiration, so glass beads or something like that. You see people writing things down like a plastic snail. It's not actually wrong, but it is quite strange when you read it. OK, so you're told that to increase the reliability, the experiment was repeated several times, which is nice. That's good. That's a really common question that's going to come up. It's going to ask you, how do you make it more reliable? In which case you say repeat. But for this one, identify one variable not already mentioned. So you're going to have to look for something that hasn't been said. So let's have a look here. We can't say anything about keeping it open to the air for 15 minutes. Uh, we can't say anything about the measurement time. We can't say anything about the temperature. All these things have been noted. So have a look at the actual kit of the experiment. And there is a couple of things that potentially we could say here. So, for example, down here, we've got a solution to absorb the carbon dioxide. So the volume of that, the concentration of that, that would make some impact to how quickly the carbon dioxide is being absorbed. So this would be a decent one to go with. I personally think this is where I would go. You'd be looking for the same mass of snail, the same species of snail, things like that. So you could lift this, you could take from here. This one I would avoid because this is just moving and that's it. Um, so if it's the same coloured liquid, it shouldn't make any difference. But you could argue that the glass tube itself has to be of the same diameter so that you get the same movement through. OK, um, as I say, this is where I would go. OK, so we now have to draw a line graph and you're given the graph paper. That's normal. Um, and you're told that this is important, choosing appropriate scales so the graph fills most of the grid. So that means that you have to at least 50 percent of the scale that you choose has to be active in terms of it has to have scale points on it. It also has to be an enclosed scale. So that means that you need to have a point at the base and a point to the side in this case. Um, and it has to be up in even scales, the kind of usual things. So this is going to be, now you have to decide first of all, obviously to make sure it's going around the right way. So what you changed goes across the bottom and what you measured goes up the side. So this is the time after tap closed. And the easiest way to get the marks on these is basically just to lift the whole of the top of the table. Um, I don't know if I'll be able to write this sideways. Reading on scale. 
and that's in centimeters cubed. Now, basically, we assume that you're perfect and then just start taking off marks for everything you make a mistake on. Unfortunately, you only have two marks to play with. So as soon as you start losing a mark, you're, you're losing a mark for even small mistakes. And there are lots of mistakes you can make in a line graph. OK, so we're looking for a time after tap closed. It's going to go up to 10. Well, you've got one, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's fine. Put your zero on and then put every check mark in. OK, so the check mark is a little line that I've put down there. You put them in and you make sure that you have every single one of them labelled. That is obviously the scale they want you to use. OK, going up the side, we've got 0, 0.00 and we need to get up to 0 0.2. So when I say half the minimum of half the scale, this is going up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So basically, 2, 3, 4, 5, you have to be at least up this high. But given that they've given you this data but this um, scale you're going to go all the way up the scale okay so we want this to be 0 0.20 so that's 0 0.1 so this is 0 0.02 0 0.04 and again you have to write all of your check marks in apologies for they're not being really neat with the graphics pad but you guys obviously on an exam will try and make your examiner love you marker more love you okay so then you need to put the points on you have to be neat with this um so two has to be 0.4 so so you're going to be neater than i'm doing on this probably you say i'm not even going to attempt to join them um but the points are not too bad on this one it's a pretty much straight line in fact it's a very neat enough straight line um, OK, I'm going to try and join, but it's in the exam. You make this super neat. Oh, that's terrible. OK. Um, so we now have, so the marker, just to make it very clear, the marker has to go through and go, yes, that mark, yes, that mark, yes, that mark, yes, that mark, yes, that mark. And obviously you have a zero, so that one as well. And then they look at the points joining and then they look at the scales. It's quite a lot, but any point out, not acceptable. OK, this calculation question. Mass of the snail was 5 grams. Use result in the table to calculate the rate of oxygen uptake by the snail over the 10 minute period. We are looking for centimetres cubed per minute per gram. OK, so we have 0 0.02 in 10 minutes. So if I divide it by 10, I'm going to get one minute. And then I want I want it per gram. So 0 0.02 divided by 5. There we go. OK, explain how the respiration of the snail and the presence of the solution in the apparatus accounts for the movement of the coloured liquid on the scale. Right, here's your it's two marks, so you're going to have to say quite a bit. This is actually nat 5, um, but it's one of the more complicated things to, to work out or to explain how this works. So what we have here is a snail and the snail is doing respiration. So that means that it is using whatever food, but really we're talking glucose. Um, taking an oxygen and converting that to carbon dioxide and water and energy. OK, so every bit of oxygen that it takes in is converted into carbon dioxide that it breathes out again. OK, we have here a solution to absorb the carbon dioxide. So the carbon dioxide that's made goes in there. Now, what's important is you have closed this tap. So if you've closed this tap, then we have a fixed volume of gas. This snail has taken in the carbon dioxide, converted in terms of the volume of, of the gas it into carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide has been taken away and therefore there is a vacuum which will pull up this liquid. OK, you have to explain that flow of, of information. OK, so here's our mark scheme. There is an awful lot of ores in this mark scheme. You'll notice on the first one, there is an awful lot of ways to get the mark on this one. Um, the same for the control. We've got another OR. Um, we have multiple options on our variables. This one mark here is pretty brutal 
because that's basically you've got to get everything right to get that mark and then also they're saying the plots and lines have to be neat for the second mark and if you've put it on the wrong scale you lose a mark there they are saying that you're allowed to go for a scientific notation and there is an awful lot of possibilities here for how you could actually explain how the respirometer is working okay check it make sure you're happy and that's us